Welcome to The Property Couch, where each week you get to listen to two of Australia's leading property experts. Bryce Holdaway, co-host of Location, Location, Location Australia on Foxtel's Lifestyle Channel, and Ben Kingsley, Chair of Property Investors Council of Australia and the 2014 and 2015 Property Investment Advisors of the Year. All right, folks, you're on The Property Couch, where each week Ben and I bring you the insider's guide to property, finance, and money management. G'day mate, and just when you thought we weren't going to talk footy, oh. Dane's back on the bus. Yep. Four years ago, nobody told us that he was going to get off. The, he's back. Nobody outside Thank of you, Dane Beams. supporters know who you're talking about. But Frio, good, good. You're gonna, no, do you want to talk about it? No, I want to talk about them this time next year because Ooh. I have I have um, uh, prematurely celebrated an arrival McCartney at our football club. And did nothing. And Tony Modra and <laughs> Trent Crowe and just keep rattling them off, mate, until he delivers the goods. <laughs> Are then, they? Then got we'll, a few good ones. Yeah. The, I'm, I'm, so let's put it this way. I'm happy, yeah. but just staying level. Right, yeah. All right. Fine. Um, but did you see for all our... Do you know how our, um, our, our rugby league supporters, um, listeners, <laughs> tell us we don't talk about them? How good was it that Billy Slater's joined the AFL? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, we don't know much about it, NRL. We're sorry. Yeah, we don't. We, we don't. All right. Hey, a um, couple of things today. We are going to talk about um, the seven tips to trap surplus cash. Oh, can't wait to get into that. Which I think is a very good because we're property, finance and money management. Today is going to be about money management. Money management. And just, just on that point, yep. that will take us over 100 tips on money management, Bryce. Because I did just did okay. this before the show started, I All quickly right. skimmed through the book. Yes, this true. Did he do that? There's 95 mm. tips in terms of money manager tips in the book. 95? 95 in terms of Can ideas. Can you count that high? Well, I, I had to break them down into fives <laughs> and then batch out me five. So it was a bit easier when I was scribbling them down. <laughs> so there's 95 in the 95, book. So and if we deliver seven, seven, there's over 100. Wow. There we go. All there right. we go. I'm we, we cracked a ton. You've impressed us. A couple of things, Ben. Um, one is if anyone is listening to this and they just want to sample the book, free chapter. Oh, yes. They Great. go to thepropertycouch.com.au. used to be the Money Smarts Checklist now, Ben. Yeah. It is the free chapter. Free chapter. So you get to check that out. So go to the Money Smarts, uh, go to thepropertycouch.com.au and it'll be on the homepage. Download that first chapter. Is that chapter. right, Lois? Is it all yeah. there? Load and it there's, up. there's also one of our friends who put their, uh, their story behind how money management is helping them, their Money Smart system. Yes. So you can check that out. That's a bonus case bonus study. Bonus case study. Um, or not a case study, bonus uh, example. Real life, real real life, life example. example. Yep. Beautiful. Uh, second thing is, uh, well, the platform's going off. Ben. Oh, it's going crazy. <laughs> crazy. But I uh, thought it'd be worthwhile, Ben, if you wouldn't mind. Um, sure. Just uh, one, to make sure that people's um, data is safe and secure. Yes. There is one hurdle they need to jump to get on the platform. There is. So we thought you might just quickly break it down. Yep. Um, I can do that. So um, what we've decided to do to protect your anonymity and also your security is that in the future, and it could be right now we know that there's a thing called iPay, right? Which means that your phone number can authorise a payment of money. Mm -hmm. So that's why we we didn't go with SMS authentication Mm -hmm. because then we would have to have your phone number, Mm -hmm. right? So obviously, you know, security is everything, but you just never know, right? So if we don't have it, then there's no way that we can be responsible for causing any financial risk or stress to anyone. Nice. So that's the best part about the, the platform. We've made it so you can be completely autonomous and not know who you are. And if we had gone through the SMS model, then we would have had the phone number. But you can't transfer money via email. That's the only thing we've got because it's two-factor authentication, which means that you do have a password. So the email address is how we can reset your password. Mm-hmm. So that's the only reason why we've got that. So authenticators are coming out there. So Google has them, Microsoft has them, and so forth. And the brilliance of these things is that they have a number and it lasts for 10 seconds. Then another number comes up. So it flashes red for the last three seconds. If you don't get that number in, it's okay, just put the next one in. Mm -hmm. Because that number's gone. Mm. It's gone into the stratosphere or whatever. It's just completely vanished. So, but we are getting some some, uh, feedback in terms of how do you do it? So it's as simple as this, Bryce. If you've ever downloaded an app, you go to the app store. You go Google Authenticator, mm-hmm. you hit download, then you click on open, okay? Now, when you're coming onto the actual platform for the first time, we ask for your nickname, 
okay, and your email address, then you go to the next step. And when you get to that part, there's a video there that is also a training video. So it's down the bottom. If you click on that training video, it'll show you exactly how easy it is. Right, then you're going to see a barcode come up. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can point your phone, so you can, you can turn your camera on once you're in the Authenticator app, point the camera at the screen, bang, done, done. automatically. Yeah, that's what I did. Yep, now if you don't do that, there's also a little um, pencil which says manual. Now there's a number that comes up underneath that, that image, you can manually load that number in and you're set up. Boom. It's a one-time setup, and then ultimately it gives you full security. That's why we've gone, this is leading edge security, and your, your financial information is in here, but the fact is we don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. That's why we say give us a nickname, so you know, that you've got that privacy that, that's really important to us and then ultimately you're away mm -hmm. in terms of how that looks. So we had that, so we've had a couple of questions. I just want to do one question from Brad Mitchell who wrote, G'day Bryce. I did say g'day Ben. Well, it's my, one of my sister's friends. Oh, perfect. Over in, uh, over in the West. Well, and, g'day um, Brad. And he's a discerning taste. He doesn't like Collingwood or Collingwood supporters. So, <laughs> so, but, so, so Phil, I don't you, even you, get recognised. You fill in the blanks, yeah. Well, there's, he's got a couple of quick questions. But he's a West Coast supporter, which is a problem. Oh yeah, that's a, that hurts me even more. I don't yeah. even want to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually true. <laughs> that's true. All right, so he's got a couple of questions. With regards to the Money Smarts platform under the headings of local government rates, water and sewage rates and charges, house and content insurers, do you include your investment property costs as well or just your principal place of residence costs? Mm -hmm. Great question, simple. I would separate them. Down the bottom, you can add an expense item and name it. Yeah. Okay, so you can add as many expense items as you want and the system will automatically calibrate that, classify it um, in terms of how that looks. So I would separate those out. The other question is has, um, are property management costs an extra cost that I need to add? Remember, Money Smarts is about money in, money out. If your property manager takes their management fees out before they give you the cash, then the reality is you don't add it, mm -hmm. right? It's only, what we're doing here is looking at just your, your liquid money, not necessarily about your overall broad tax systems and uh, you know, tax outcomes. It's just looking at simple money management. So if they're taking it out and you get the net money into your bank account, that's all you need in terms of money in, don't worry about adding the any expenses that are pre-organised or or money's been taken out by any party. Same with your tax returns. Sometimes people say, well, my tax return is that, but my accountant takes their fees out. Mm. Well, don't put the fees in if they're automatically taking mm. out if you're only adding the net value of income coming in. So that's how it works. So a little bit of an information, but the other big news here, Bryce, mm -hmm. is that we're going to um, set up a group inside our property couch Facebook page. Well, Ben, you, you talked about uh, the future. It actually exists. If, as soon as they hear this, yes. it'll be in there. And do you know what? We're actually going to put a video in there to show how to do that Google Authenticator that you just talked about. Because what you just talked about was a very good explanation, Ben, but if it's still yep, we'll sort put of the video there land, as well. there's going to be a video in that Facebook group. So go and check that out. Beautiful. And now, with re so there's another question here that I didn't see, but here we go. With regards to car registration and insurance, how are these costs indicated in regards to novated leases? Should the cost of a novated lease after tax amount be included in expenses? So the answer to that is we're only interested in net outcomes here. Mm. So if there's costs that uh, we're only interested in the money flow. Okay, so Money Smarts is a money management system in, interested in really just tracking cash in, cash out. Mm -hmm. So if the novated lease after expenses is the amount that you get coming in or you, you expense out, that's all we want in your money management system. Yep. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does. If not, we'll, we'll put some more explanation in there as well. In, Enjoy in, the book. And the platform. And the platform, And Cheers. the grand final win. Oh, I didn't say <laughs> grand final. Gee, there we go. So there, so, so well, he put, uh, Brad went on the- uh, Now my goal is, once a week, I'm going to go into, you know how pas passionate I am about Facebook. Yeah, right? I do so, know how passionate you are about <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> so I'll go in there and answer those questions. All right. right. So if you've got any questions around Money Smarts, so if you're thinking, where do I go for those questions, you can always go on to the pipe thing, speech pipe, speak pipe, <laughs> that, you know, voice we, pipe. We, we encourage people to go to speak pipe. Yeah, it's what it's called. That's exactly what it's speak called. Speak pipe. Speak pipe. So they can, I oh, was just having a little giggle. Yeah. Um, She's Gen Y. She can't believe you don't know what it is. Right. So <laughs> you can give 
give us questions. Yep. We'll answer them on the show. Yep. But it, obviously, there'll be a lot of questions that we may not be able to get to. So I'll do my best to go and answer all those questions in regards to uh, Money Smarts inside the there new There you go, Facebook folks. Group. You heard it here first. Get him busy. So uh, Now, we've got a lot to get through. We've got a lot to get through. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into those seven steps. Oh, is that what we're doing? Before we, I know you're keen to get oh, in, but I know, um, I investor know. of the year. Investor oh, sorry, the... yes, quick one. So your investment property magazine um, every year has an investor of the year awards. And in 2019, you, there are uh, several awards. The new investor, strategic investor, Renault investor is some of the awards. Now there's 20 grand's worth of prizes. Oof. 20 grand, so it's worth looking at. It's worth parking on your offset of account. Course. You know, there's no money in it for us. It's just, it's a great magazine. It's where great education is held. We've got Location Score as one of the prizes as well. Okay. So you can get a subscription. Uh, if you're a winner of one of those awards, you can get a subscription complimentary as part of that. So show notes, we'll, we'll give you the link to where you nominate or uh, apply for. If you think you're a great investor, you've had a good year, or you want to tell your story and put it up for grabs, then that's no, where a, you would go. Terrific opportunity for people to showcase their because uh, property investing is um, is a personal development game as much as is a, as a money game. It is. People have to endure lots of things because I was in New Zealand last week, Ben, and there's lots of yes. people. Like, there's lots of there's lots of people who have significant portfolios over there, and they they've won the they've won the mental game because you know there's a lot of people. Um, uh, who don't do anything over there and yep. just the, the amount of properties they were able to have and the ideas that they had and the way that they view it, very similar to the market over here. But what was interesting is that the, at the um, uh, it was the New Zealand Property Investor Federation conference yep. and um, uh, the guy who was the sponsor was a mortgage broker, right? Gets yep. up, his name is Tony, and he gets up and he goes, I've got some exciting news to tell you. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And he goes, soon we'll be able to get 70% LVR loans. <laughs> Up from because currently it's at sixty percent, right? So and they're like everyone in the room's like, yeah, that'd be great, that'd be great. And I was like, oh, isn't that interesting? Because over, yeah, in, right, over right. in Oz, um, <laughs> we, we we don't have to worry about sixty or seventy percent loans. We can still get our eighties and in some case ninety. So um, so and it's always good, isn't it, Bryce, when other people share their stories because mm -hmm. you can get, as you say, play the mind game and win the mind game. Mm -hmm. We just get confidence from that. Mm -hmm. Other people doing successful. So there you go. Check it out in the show notes. The your investment property investor of the year award 2019 entries close on the 30th of october so you've got to be quick yep i like be it quick all right today all right. My, my, mindset my, minute bryce mindset minute if only everyone could know that i was just nudged me and said don't forget the mindset <laughs> minute because i was about to forget it um but today i wanted and i, I really really believe in this mindset minute ben and i yeah. think it's i think it's um uh, relevant for what we're doing today but if you do, and this was unknown, I couldn't find the source, right? Yep. Um, but it crossed my radar about two weeks ago. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. Mm. So take the easy way out, Ben, and yep. you, you'll bear that fruit. Put in the hard yards now. It's the old reap and sow principle. Yep. Um, but the amount of times you've seen someone... With, with property investment, it's if you take the easy road and let's and outsource all of your understanding, let someone be in control of your agenda. Like, like how many times have we had to undo bad property investment advice? Mm -hmm. Whereas if they had have taken, you know, for us with the agenda, they had to listen to the first 20 episodes of our podcast. That's yep. that's life changing. And the, the amount of times I've had someone come up to me and say, um, I've listened to the podcast, I've implemented the principles and now I'm well on the way. I've got to say that's unbelievably rewarding to hear that because they were prepared to put a bit of effort in. So if you do what is easy, Ben, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. Well, Bryce, there's another point there and a segue into money management, right? So the money management story there is exactly the same. It takes a little bit to categorize, mm -hmm. set up, plan, and then change habits, right? And a lot of people are challenged by that, and they go too hard. And then they go back to poor money management, which is easy, mm -hmm. right? Money management, and they don't get the rewards from it. So good segue. Because if you think about our book, Ben, there is a point in the book where I reckon a lot of readers will go, Oh, deep breath. And it's yep. at the checkup stage, right? Because yep. there's a bit to understand. And obviously yep. the platform um, solves that very quickly. Solves it simply. But if you go through that early phase of setting it up, because there's two things that are going on, isn't there? You've got to read the book and understand the system. Yep. And then you've got to implement the, book, <laughs> uh, the system that's in the book, right? Yep. 
And if you don't get to the implementation, because we say in the book that it's financial peace within 10 minutes a month, but there's a caveat to that. After you've set it up, which might take you two hours. Yeah, yeah. And good preparation, like in anything, is for good outcomes. Mm -hmm. The better the inputs and the better the analysis you do early to sort your money and calculate it correctly and grab all of the right pieces, the easier it's going to be. So folks, where are you um, uh, choosing to do what's hard, which will eventually make your life easy? And uh, have, a, have a little reality check. Where, where are you taking the easy road that will ultimately make your life See, hard? I do five squats and, you know, every morning, Bryce, and, and you know what's happening? I'm not getting fit. I'm taking <laughs> the easy road where I need to take the hard road, which is get off my butt yeah. and go out there and have a run and do it consistently. So why, why aren't you doing that? Uh, that's a good question. Mate, you've got a beautiful park across the road from your house. Oh, I know. You're very close to wonderful, yep. natural... Um, very busy, Bryce. I'm very busy. S- excuses. See that? <laughs> excuses. Self-taught excuses. Got to get it from my bum. Yeah, well done. Uh, you do got to get it from your bum. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> I haven't been for a walk in a while, but that's okay. Number one, did we finally get there, Iris? How far are you Seven. What, what? Seven tips to trap surplus cash. Love bro. it. Number one. Um, number one is stop checking out the Joneses, mm-hmm. Ben. Stop checking out the Joneses. Harder than ever to do because of Instagram and Facebook, because I know you spend plenty of time on that, Ben. Yeah. Um, but comparing yourself to other people's highlights reel with your behind the scenes is just fraught with money challenges, right? Because what you don't know is what's going on underneath the bonnet at their place. You don't know if they've got credit card debt that you would be unbelievably surprised how big it is. You would not know if they are trapping surplus. You would not know if they are spending their equity, Ben. So they're going backwards in wealth. Uh, Stop checking out the Joneses. And I'm not going to say that I'm perfect at this, but I am very, very mindful that this was a big part of my uh, history and um, a conscious effort to change it going forward. Yeah, it was... Mate, I mean, I see it quite a bit, right? Especially with young kids and birthday parties Mm. and like everyone trying to outdo each other. Mm. Like, you know, there's image challenges there. We're we're becoming image society. Don't get me started on that rant. Um, But the reality is, is, yeah, like, you know, what's wrong with having just people over and having a bit of fairy bread? And a couple of, you know. Is it gluten free? Yeah, well, what, yeah, no, gluten <laughs> Or some snags. Like, yeah, and create a fun time. It mm. doesn't have mm. to be, you know, all bells and whistles and millions of presents and toys. And, oh, it, it, it's crazy. But that's you had, a good, you had a good suggestion this morning, which I think would be good for listeners, about the experience. Yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't. I was talking about it to my lovely wife, Jane, um, just this morning. Um, and she got it from a couple. Um, out of Shepparton who, um, you know, my son um, has short stature, so he's got dwarfism. And so we're part of the Short Stature Association of Australia. And so we have a catch up every now and then. We go to a park or something like that. And, and obviously the other boys and girls get to meet each other and, you know, they see, they see the reality of, of their lives and share their stories. Um, well, it's good to see me too for them as well, isn't it? Yeah, it Someone is. else is in the same position. Yep. Correct. So, um, and so when we go to those events, um, one of the ladies there said, oh, we don't buy toys for our kids now. You know, and we don't give toys as much as we used to because they're just material things. And, you know, they are, these days you can get toys, you know, really bulky toys for five bucks, seven bucks, ten bucks, and they don't play with them, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's this expectation that's being set that, you know, well, where's my next one? And then they just want to open it and they get this little, you know, um, gener- uh, you know what is it called? Uh, serotonin hit and then it's not cool. Mm. So um, the idea is to actually gift experiences. And the experience might be that you have a, you know, there might be a movie that's coming up and you go to the premiere night. So it's still got a cost yep. in that particular case, but other experiences could be walking through a national park or, or doing other types of things. They don't always have to cost money. But I thought that one was a good one in terms of that once you start setting the expectation, oh, I've got the latest toy, he's got the latest fad, he's got, and you've got to, and the kid's in the playground, you know, it's a fidget spinners, it's this, it's that, it's, a, it's the footy cards, all of those things put pressure on um, mums and dads in terms of making sure that they fit in. But the reality is you don't have to fit in. you just got to be comfortable in your own skin, right? You know, that's the best part about being alive is, you know, finding your inner sense and moving forward. Well, it becomes a cycle, isn't it? Because uh, if, you, if you keep up with the guy over the fence or the guy or the gal over the fence, yep. they're keeping up with you and it just becomes this debt cycle spiral of everyone trying to keep up with it. But at the end of the day, everyone just wants to connect yeah. They want they want to be, uh, you know, uh, like we take our kids to Latitude for 
the birthday parties for the same thing because yep. it's an experience. They're jumping around, they're burning energy yep. Yep. Um, rather than trying to have some wow f- yep. party. So, yep. but you know, people have different different views, and we're we're cool with that. You can pick our vintage being seventies children. But, well, uh, look, if you want to trap more surplus, well, that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. There are ways in which you can say the budget for the party or the budget for that thing is less. Mm-hmm. That's what we've got to work towards. Mm-hmm. So we've got to be more creative. We've got to think about it rather than just sort of saying, oh, you know, because 10 kids then becomes 15, right? And then you're 15 at the jumping castle and then you know, whatever it might be. And then it's 25 bucks, 30 bucks and 50 bucks for it. All starts to blow out, right? So that's, that's just one example. Great example. So number one, stop checking out the Joneses. Um, the comparisons will kill you. Um, number two, Ben. Uh, stop and consider before you tap and go. It's too easy to tap and go. People have zero immunity around tapping and going now. Um, But impulse is the enemy uh, of good money management habits and it is the impulse of trapping surplus cash because uh, $2 here, $7 there, we've said it a few times now, Ben. When when I unpacked our, our own household budget, we weren't blowing out on a new TV. We weren't blowing out on the big spending. We were blowing out on the you know, the tap and goes on a daily basis, which were killing uh, the trapping of the cash flow. Well, you don't have a tally with digital money, right? In a cashless society, there's a reason why they lo- the banks love it. The reason why the credit card providers love the cashless economy, mm. because there's no conscious feeling of an exchange. Yep. It's just like nothing really happened then. Yep. You know, so bang, that's all good. I didn't even have to put a pin number in under $100. That's where the slippage occurs, and we spend a bit of time in the book talking about that in terms of what that is. So for me, um, being really conscious about that is going to allow you to trap more surplus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously we've got tools and systems to do that. Well, it's an awareness game, isn't it? Because like when I was at uni, I used to work at um, the casino over in Perth, and their strategy was to never let you see the sunlight and never have a clock. Like when you walk into that, because they want you to lose yourself into the experience and then yep. obviously, clearly for them, lose as much money out of your pocket. So I, I think it's a, a very good point you make. that, And the, the disconnection from uh, when you've made the purchase, so I make a purchase for 30 bucks today. In the old days, we'd pull the cash out and we'd yep. have some form of um, remorse or regret or a full accountability that we made the decision. Now it's tap and go, I'll worry about that at the end of the month. And then you've, you're totally um, desensitized to it. Correct, because the, the, the winning formula, the secret source for bankers is that's also credit these days. Back in the old days, it wasn't, was it? You mm. know, it was like you had the money or you didn't. Mm. So there was no tap and go. If the money wasn't in your wallet um, and it was an inconvenience to go down and get the cash, you couldn't do that. But obviously, digital, the digital economy has allowed for not only to you to use a debit card to do that, but also credit card. So, and people get to the mindset, it's my money. Yep. When it's not, it's actually the bank's money. And I think, I, don't, I can't remember the stat, Ben, I think it's about 19 or 21, they're the two figures, 19 to 21%, you, you spend 19 to 21% more, more by being a plastic spender than a cash spender. Yeah. I remember, the other day I went up to um, the cafe and I gave her a $50 note. She was, t- <laughs> she said, what do I do with that? <laughs> so they put it in the till and just give me my change. Well, like, the other didn't thing 50 too, bucks in, 50 note, no. in, in the, you know, the, the small little takeaways and all that, they're really penalised by the margin, you know, the, the, the sort of merchant margins. That are, so they're, they're pinging you 50 cents for any transaction under $10. Mm. So what else do you do? Mm. You just go and say, all right, well, I'll get a can of drink. Yeah. Right, because it's, it's $8 for the roll, or $2 for a can of drink. All right, well, there you go. I've just saved 50 cents. Yeah. No, you haven't. You just spent two bucks that you said you weren't going to spend and you were going to have a water. So that's another I can't believe how much money you saved by spending money then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So there's a perfect example. So number one, stop checking out the Joneses. Number two, stop and consider uh, before you tap and go, Ben, because um, convenience does have a price, doesn't it? It does. Good segue. You know, in terms of... That's exactly what we're talking about. So um, in our busy societies, in our time poor societies, we fail to organise things. And what's a classic case of that? I mean, for us, it sometimes occurs where Saturday morning and there's no milk, right? So Saturday morning, so I, so the supermarket's about a 10 minute drive, but there's a little milk bar, still a little milk bar around the corner, right? So I can get milk there for $3.20, or I can drive five minutes there and back to the proper supermarket where I can get milk for $2 for two litres. Yeah. So I've got to make a conscious call. There's $1.20 in that mm. in terms of whether my budget can accommodate that or not. But there is that. There's no doubt. I mean, 7-Elevens, all of that, they're priced 
to for convenience. So you pay a premium for that as opposed to going to the supermarket. What's a classic, another classic case, you might be at the, uh, the coffee shop next to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Now you could walk into the supermarket and you can get that bottle of water for $1.60 mm. or you can buy it for $3.50 at, mm. you know, $3 at the tuck shop or the cafe. What do you do? I mean, you know, you feel embarrassed if you're going to put the water on the table after you've just bought something from the tuck shop. Yeah. But that's the story, right, in terms of... So there is a premium if you're not um, organised, if you're going to go for convenience. So you just cut out, you know, 30, 40, 50 of those transactions over the course of the year, and there's probably... Adds up. Yeah, there's probably $100, $200, $300 in your bottom line that's going to go back into surplus cash. Look after the pennies, Ben, and the pounds take care of themselves. They do. Um, so number three is get money smart. Now oh, this yes. is a surprise from us. Yeah. Well, we've got to weave it in, don't we? I mean, but the, the, the point here is... We believe in it. Oh, it's, well, we, it, it's a proven system, Bryce. Mm. So the reason why we believe in it is because a lot of people don't like to have complex ways in which they've got to document every dollar that they spend. So our top-down approach in terms of how we make money management easier is what it's all about. And and the, the in terms of these top seven tips, the one we want to highlight the most is the seven day float. Mm. Right? So the weekly allowance. Mm. Because once you it's categorize your money, it's a game changer. Mm. Because you take that mindset that we were talking about before about how much money have I got in your, it, it's so ir irrespective of whether it's a cashless economy or the digital, you don't care that it's a tap and go then because you will absolutely know that I have got fifty dollars left, so this is a this is a, a decent purchasing decision. Whereas if you know that there's, you know, sixty thousand dollars in your offset account, yeah, absolutely, it's like boom, yeah, boom, boom, you'll just keep doing it, right? So mm. there's so we've got to change that habit. It's like no, no, I've got to get to my next seven day allowance. You know that weekly float. So I've been doing the seven day float for years now, Ben. Yep. Um, thanks to you and Popey introducing that. Um, uh, I can say to the people, uh, and I don't know if you can remember far back when you started it, yeah. I can say to the people, when you s implement it, you will probably stumble. Yeah, yeah, Keep yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Because it's yeah. usually week two, uh, you've made less of week three, maybe even week four, Ben, but you'll eventually get into the cadence, you eventually get into that rhythm, and it's yeah. really, really important. Because if you're trying to undo a lot of habits of keeping up with the Joneses, tapping and going, not being accountable with your money, keep going back to the well, it's actually, it's actually a huge, um, it's a huge shift for you to go, oh, what do you mean I've got to rein in my spending? What do you mean I've got to actually mm -hmm. identify how much is in my seven day flight? What do you mean I've got to actually use grade five maths just to keep up to date on how much money I've got left? It is an adjustment, it is a shift, but it's one of those things if we go back, if you do what's easy, your life will be hard. It's actually going to be hard in the very first couple of weeks as you're trying to get two people on the same page if you're sharing agenda with someone else. But once you've done it, it makes an enormous difference. It does. I mean, we're seeing some of these money apps from the banks and so forth. I mean, they, they want you turning money over, right? It's in their best interest. Commerce, the whole thing works for them, right? Mm -hmm. So if their app tells you, I can't go and buy a dress now because it's not payday, but if you've just been paid you can go out and buy a dress or you can go out and buy something material, that's probably not still the best money management system. You know, what you should have is a, a classification for clothing and footwear, mm. and you should know a provision for that, and you should know basically how much you're gonna spend on that over the year. Whether you go and buy that dress tomorrow, that's fine. Just don't go and buy three or four more dresses or five pair of shoes, or in, in the guy's case, don't go and you know, overspend on business shirts or whatever it is you're gonna spend on. That's the point in terms of once you've provisioned for it, you're able to spend it, but just don't spend any more than that. So there's a combination of ideas that, that meshes together to build the money management system in terms of money smarts. That's the way in which to, to use that. So a couple of things for the money smarts. It's not a budget, it's a money management system. Correct. Um, it's, it's the money that you said you'd spend each week, we call it the seven day float. And it just means that you don't unconsciously overspend again, Ben. And the rest, is just a simple rules-based system thereafter. So the fundamental principle behind it is that every dollar has a job to do, every dollar is allocated somewhere, and it's just based on how our grandparents used to use money BC before credit cards, Yep. and it's evergreen, Ben. It works at every stage of your life. If every you are, stage. If you're a university student uh, on casual income, no problem. If you are a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, it works, it doesn't discriminate, it works for everyone. So if you want to check that out, clearly we've written a book on it, but it's something that we think is imperative to trapping um, surplus cash. 
Beautiful. Number, number four, Ben. This one is about having uh, difficult conversations early. And by that, it means sometimes in a relationship in two people that share a life agenda, sometimes money is difficult um, and that conversation is difficult to have. Uh, we're going to encourage you to uh, do what's hard to make life easy. Yep. We're going to encourage you to have those difficult conversations as soon as possible because financial infidelity is is the enemy of the bigger picture of what's going on here because um, if, I'm, if I've got um, expenses that I'm hiding from my wife, that's financial infidelity and likewise if she's doing the same. We've got to have those hard conversations to make sure that we're on the same page because if we're not pushing in the same direction, and we've got, and we've, and every single person has got different baggage around money, right? Mm-hmm. I've got some baggage around significance. I've got some baggage around it, it fills a, a void, all that sort. Of, we've got to, we've got to get that onto the table and shine some light on on those um, those parts of our life that are, that are not easy to chat about. Because if you do, um, that will help you trap more surplus, Ben. Two things there, Bros. It's the number one cause for arguments in any household mm-hmm. is relating to money management. Mm-hmm. And it's a trust issue then, Mm -hmm. right? So if you're going to do that in that part of your life, where's the trust? Mm -hmm. And if trust breaks down in a relationship, then ultimately the relationship is going to fall apart. So um, we don't believe that you should have separate money. We should, you know, the best system, the way in which your money is going to work the best for you is to combine that money. For people who've got the same agenda in life, absolutely. Correct, if if you've got your life partner, right? That's not to say that you can't have your own allocation. That's not the point here. But the point being is put all the money in the offset, right? Work out your classifications and yearly spend, break it down into the month. But as part of that provisioning, it's like, okay, Bryce. There's your pocket money. Here's your pocket money. Mm. You go off and do what you said you want to do with that. I don't care what you do with it, enjoy, Mm -hmm. right? If that's what you said you're going to do, because you've set yourself a surplus at the end of the year, because it's not about trapping every dollar and not living, because that's not that's not enjoyable. That's not what life is all about. Life is short. So from that point of view, that's what you've got to focus in on. So for me, um, pull it together, everyone get on the same page, full disclosure, and build from there, and away you go. So number one, stop checking, uh, checking out the Joneses. Number two, stop and consider before you tap and go. Number three is get money smart. Number four is have Difficult conversations early, Ben. Number five. This is a big one. What's one's number five? Avoid lifestyle creep. Yeah. So what does that mean? It means that when you are a uni student on casual wages, Ben, you went and got down to the bottle shop and you got the really cheap wine. And then as you get your you know advanced roles, you might start to... Um, I don't drink, so I'm going to sound like a nut to here, but Dom Perignon or yeah. you know some some yep. fancy bottle of Penfolds. Yeah, well, there yep. we go. Grange. Thanks for rescuing yeah, me there. there. Yep. Um, but but does does this does this twenty seven dollar bottle of wine really taste any better than uh, the nine dollar bottle? Now I'm I'm not I'm not qualified to answer, but people who have the people who do drink a lot of they tell me that there's not a lot of difference, right? Yeah. So it really, oh, Ivis is not agreeing with that. <laughs> she, she's a single malt a whiskey drinker. So she, but this is my point. The point is, saying, if, that's, if that is what you want to have, right, then don't, don't neglect yourself from the things you enjoy, just in moderation, right? Mm-hmm. That there's, there's, and a lot of people might be thinking, what's that different about keeping up with the Joneses? Well, here's the deal, right? I drive a 2012 Volkswagen Golf, mm-hmm. right? I could afford to, buy, uh, to to drive a better car and a, and a newer car, mm. right? So, but I, and the area that I live, it's full of new Mercedes and new Audis and new, well, don't I don't have new cars, right? So that to me is like, don't, don't if you judge me on your car, you, you're not you, you don't know who I am, right? Mm. But coming down to this one about the, the lifestyle creep, yeah, it's going from the budget beer to the boutique beer to the craft beer to the imported beer, whatever, whatever that well, looks it's the, like. It's the tickets in the outer to the tickets yeah. in the yeah. uh, medallion club. Yeah. It's, and so, so the point here is not to be a nanny, sort no. of you do what you, just be aware that just because your income's in, increased doesn't mean your lifestyle has to increase if it doesn't add any extra happiness to your life. Yep. If you love a really expensive bottle of red, knock yourself out, right? Yep. Again, I'm not qualified to talk about that. Yep. But the point is it's, it's, a, it's a cup size, right? Yep. And you're, you, be aware that you have a cup and you've got to consciously expand that cup because if you have a certain by the cup size, I mean the difference between what your income is and your expenses is your cup. Now, if your income rises, 
your cup size remains the same. It just means uh, is, is your income rises, yep. your cup stays the same. It's going to drag your expenses with you. What's ideal is the income increasing and your expenses not tracking up at the same rate. It means you get more surplus, you get to trap that, and you get to put more into what you want to do. And, and you can have more experiences. So what's a good example of that? So let's say you love live music, right? And let's say you have, you have your favourite two um, live uh, concerts you, you, that you will do anything to get to. They're your favourite bands mm. in the world. So what would Coldplay might be like? They do yep. amazing concerts, right? Agreed. So if Coldplay was coming out again, I probably want to get on the floor. Same. I probably want to immerse myself, be close to the band. But if you know, I went to Pink when she came out, I didn't care where I sat. I was still happy <laughs> well, she for came the to you. Yeah, she flew all around. <laughs> so, but but that's the point, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's like so. I chose to pay less for that ticket, but more for the ones that mm. meant more to me. Mm. Um, you know, Australia are playing the US in basketball. So, you know, basketball is the game that I grew up with and I played for all my... So it's like, okay, well, am I ready to get that really ultimate experience? Uh, can I afford to? Because mm-hmm. I've made some sacrifices in the past to be in the position that I'm in today. And they're the types of things that are going to fill my bucket. Mm-hmm. It's not so much about how many material things I've got. That's the thing. So they're the, they're the decisions we make. But we bring it down to day-to-day because that's what we're talking about, trapping more surplus. If we bring it down to those day-to-day things, it is a choice of that. $14 bottle of wine and you find a really nice one versus the $25 bottle of wine. Because mm. chances are if it's any good, it'll go to 25 next year. So hook into it early. Uh, <laughs> it's not There's gonna, a tip for you. <laughs> you know, buy a dozen bottles of it. But it is things like that, you know, in terms of being conscious about that. Because it's amazing what $10 here, $50 there, $100 there does over the course. Because that money's sitting <coughs> either in a savings account or sitting in an offset account. That's making your money work harder for you. Yeah, I'm with you, Ben. I, I uh, Jan Summers drives around in a 2004 yeah. uh, 3, 320 BMW. That's what I drive around in a 2004 320. It's... Go to bigger than that. Yep. Go to Warren Buffett. Mm. Like he drove around in a middle class, middle, you know, standard American car, and I think he's upgraded to a Toyota Camry. Yeah. Like, talk yep. about, yep. you know, someone... And he gets his $3.20 that he gives to McDonald's exactly. in the morning. And that's if it's a good... If it's you know, a like good on the market. It's a good yep. market day. But success leaves clues. It Jan, does. Jan Summers, yep. she, she hasn't got lifestyle creep. Right. She can afford whatever yep. she wants. Jerry yeah. Harvey's another one, flies mm. cattle class, mm. so doesn't go up the front of the bus. Mm. Right? Doesn't see the need to go up the front of the bus. Doesn't mm. see that that warrants the money, the experience, the value for a short period of time. It gets there safely, you know, and planes don't reverse into hills. <laughs> You know, the front end, that front end, it usually hits first. <laughs> it's all, <laughs> the way to the, all the way to the scene of the crash, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't it? Very good. So, um, and uh, for the avoidance of doubt, just to make sure I haven't said anything that upsets anyone, uh, I'm not saying uh, do what you want with your money. Just yep. the, the overarching principle here is uh, be conscious of the cup, be conscious of the lifestyle creep, and be aware of do you actually need it or are you just doing it because you've got more income? I, I th- I can, can I summarise that? Yeah. Money has consequences. Mm-hmm. You make a decision and there's a consequence. There's an opportunity cost in every dollar that you spend. Mm-hmm. Love it. So, uh, number six, Ben. Um, retire bad debt ASAP. Mm-hmm. Because we always think there's three types of debt. Horrible debt. Yep. Tolerable debt. Tolerable. Oh, horrible <laughs> and tolerable. And then productive, right? Yep. So horrible debt is stuff that you buy that goes down in value. Mm-hmm. Tolerable debt is something that you buy for the principal place of residence because you are the only one grinding away, paying it off, but it's yep. still typically for uh, uh, something that goes on value. And then clearly productive debt is what we talk a lot about yep. uh, with investment properties. But if you've got bad debt, not only does it not go up in value, you are the only one paying it off, but it's usually costing you an absolute fortune. Yep. Um, so the amount of times I've seen people have $10,000 worth of cash in the bank and $6,000 worth of store cards, I'm thinking, that just doesn't make sense. You should, that should be netted off super, super quick. Straight away, yeah. straight away. And I mean, what are the things that really stick out to me? It's mainly material things um, that people are buying mm. or upgrading to in terms of bad debt. So a handbag's a handbag's a handbag. A um, Golf clubs are golf clubs are golf club, mm-hmm. um, you know, so there's different types of things. Holidays, I know people who might be feeling a little bit down or a little bit out that they think, you know, everyone says, oh, just go on a holiday. Mm. Oh, but I can't afford, it doesn't matter, just, it's good, it's going to refresh your soul. Yep, yeah, but it doesn't have to be a five-star holiday at the best resort because then you can, you know, basically show your shop front on socials and... Tell everyone about the, how you love going to Singapore and watching everyone in the pool with their... Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> the world is changing, and I don't think it's for so, the better. So, well, 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 it's just I was surprised by I don't get out much, <laughs> and I was surprised by you ready for the songs? amount of people who were doing selfies, right? Yeah. And and so we're lying by the pool, and um, we've got a little ramp for Jack to get into the water and so forth. Um, and then there's this uh, family just basically had this young child, so it was grandmother and basically <laughs> mother and and entourage, right? And they just basically stood in front of us and put the child onto this ramp bit and then proceeded to take a thousand photos yeah. and didn't leave the space for like 15, 20 minutes. So Jane and I just picked up our gear and went to another part of the pool <laughs> because it was just like, now, you know, it, look, in Asia, um, having traveled up there a lot, Ibis. people are very comfortable in tight spaces yeah. because there's a lot of them, <laughs> right? And so they, you know, so, so the personal space yeah. that we have they here in Australia, to- completely different to personal <laughs> space that they have in it. And so it's like, no, no, it's just first in best dress. It's, you know, it's it's basically the fittest survive. And there's bugger you, we don't care if you're lying down and trying to watch your kids. We're just gonna come in, put our child there and take a million. And everywhere did we you, went. Did you photo bomb at the back? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there was a little, little strange look of like, um, I'm trying to work this out, yeah. but anyway. So it's it's strange how people are like that. But we, we I, digress. Well, I, 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 I just laugh because I could. I just know what you're like. You're so <laughs> old school. <laughs> that would have just oh, revved you up. Like a little, you know. Because in uh, we were in Bali in August, and yeah. um, there was uh, there was a woman uh, from another country who hired a local Balinese person just to take a thousand photos of her prancing around. Yeah. In front of the yeah. in front of the waterfall, like it was a serious sideshow, and um, she was oblivious well, the, to the fact that there was the Instagram of other people partners there. video is one of the funniest videos I, I think I've seen that's going around. That is, you know, like, yep, I've got to take another photo. Yep, yeah, I've got to take another photo. So yes, yeah, no. I'm an Instagram husband. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Andrew's into food, so yeah, she, yeah. Well, she posts fine. it up. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm with okay, you. Okay, so let's get back to so the horrible death. How did we get there? Horrible. I don't know. You oh, get, oh, well, this. you got to help me out here. Yeah? Like, it's, well, I can't remember how we got there. <laughs> Horrible debt, yep. debt, material things. Oh, holidays, know, yeah. yeah, holidays. Don't, That's where it was. <laughs> when tolerable debt, it? tolerable debt. Um, buying the car, buying the home, yep. oh, great one. The car to get to a place of employment to fulfil to get more money makes perfect sense. Doesn't need to be a brand new car. Mm. Could be a demo. Could be three or four years old. Safe and reliable. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about. And then obviously productive debt. We are. Yeah. Well, it's just. It's cash on cash return. Yep. It's about being sensible. Well, that's why money management is so important because if you're going to get into any form of debt, you need to be in a position where you know exactly what you're doing. So the productive debt is about where you've invested something into controlling it and appreciating asset. And over time, you're going to get a reward, financial yeah. reward from that. It's pure and simple. Return greater than the cost. Correct. But debt is the enemy. Who you are, yep. the, the, the borrower is at the mercy of the lender. Yep. And so you need to respect that. Yes. And as productive debt, you're happy because you're getting a better return, but you, as a horrible debt, you just do not want to be at the mercy of the lender. So retire, number six, retire bad debt ASAP. And the final one. Number seven, Ben. Yep. Is treat your household as a business. Yeah, well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, money is an essential need. It's not what we, you know, it's not the only thing. It's not what we're purposed on this earth for. There's lots of more important things than money, but we've got to be in control of it. So if we treat our house as a business, Bryce, what do we need to do? Well, if you were going to run a business, Ben, you would put lots of planning in place. Yes. You would make sure that you allocate appropriate resources for the appropriate areas and you would have to make judgment calls yep. on who needs more resources, why do you need more, it doesn't have to be a, you know, an equal distribution, you would make those based on your priorities, Ben? 100%. So you need to prioritise based on a few things we've talked about, prioritise the type of wheels you want to be, to prioritise the holidays you want to take, prioritise the style of food you want to have, prioritise what you want to uh, have over your head to close on. So you would plan, you would allocate, you would prioritise, and of course, Ben, you would not trade insolvent. If you are a company director who's trading insolvent, you go to jail. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you just because you don't go to jail in your household, Ben, doesn't mean that the principles of not trading insolvent don't apply to your own household. Because if you treat your household as a business, a business is trying to get a return to the shareholders. Yep. So the business of your own home is you're trying to get a return to the people in the house to allow you to buy the experiences that are valuable to you. And that only comes if you have more coming in than you have coming out, Ben, which net, which creates a profit. Brilliant segue, Bryce, to trapping the surplus. Mm-hmm. Everything we're about here 
is doing a 12 month plan to have a surplus target and hitting that surplus. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. It's as right? simple as that. So it's as simple. We call it a surplus in our house. Our business calls it a profit. Correct. But it's the same deal. It's exactly the same deal. Money in, money out, plan what that looks like, allocate it out appropriately, prioritize it as you say, and then have a surplus. Have a, have a result at the end of that. And if you are around the other way and you are trading in solvent, that just means that you can't sustain your household. The credit card debt, the debt has got you. You're not in a position to live it, now, or you might be living above your means. You may still have no debt, but you still could be living above your means in terms of the choices you are making and the things that you think are important to you may not be as, as important as having some level of financial security. Because what trading in solvent means you are not able to meet your bills when and when they fall due. Yeah, the debt obligation. So yeah. basically there's there's more money going out than money coming in. Um, you wouldn't, you know, in that case you wouldn't have money owed to you, so trade debtors, but in, yeah. in a household that just means, well, you know, if I'm not working and those types of things. Look, and the best part about life is and, and money management is if you if you get all that organized the last thing you ever, ever want to do is declare personal bankruptcy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that, it that, is a stain that you cannot clean for the is, rest of it, your life. It'll just ruin your opportunities in yeah. the future. And all the convenience that most other people get to enjoy, you won't get to enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. So I have a mate yeah. uh, who has um, declared bankruptcy twice. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh, oh, Has he if, from if, you do what, if you do what is easy, Ben, your life will be hard, right? Yeah. That's what our mindset minute was today. He, he wasn't able to punch his way through that stuff, yeah. so just did what was easy. Now his life is hard, Ben. He, mm. As you say, he's not getting yep. lending, he's not able to leverage, he's not able to do those things. And um, it, is a, it is a stain on your... On it's a your, long way back. Yeah. It's a long way back from that, that mm. point. In. So don't do it. Mm. Just set yourself up for a bit of planning. Um, reap what you sow in terms of if you put that plan together and you stick to it. You know, and there's a recipe book called Make Money Simple. Make Money Simple again, Ben. Financial yep. peace with less than 10 minutes a month. So Ivis, here they are for you. Number one, stop checking out the Joneses. Number two, stop and consider before you tap and go. Number three, get money smart. Number four, have difficult conversations early. Number five, avoid the lifestyle creep. Uh, number six is retire bad debt ASAP. Number seven is treat your household as a business, Ben. There's seven tips. Beautiful. Takes us over the hundred. Takes us over the hundred if you've got the book. If you've got the book. <laughs> hey, uh, my life hack today, Ben, is yes. um, I, I got myself into, um, th this This actually is a contributor to me uh, getting myself into a little bit of trouble the other day. Yep. But I, um, I, I disappointed my wife, right? I, oh, I, um, oh, don't do that, bros. I, uh, I was sitting on the couch and I've, I've always got a million things that I can watch, right? I've got a few courses, I've got all this content and I'd love nothing more than to put the kids down and sit there and just watch it, right? Yep. And so I've got more content to consume than I um, have time, time available, right? So what I did is I was sitting on the couches before I flew to New Zealand on the, on the Friday, I was sitting there on the Thursday and I'd just pack my bag and sit on the couch. I thought I was doing the right thing, right? With the amount of time that I was spending with Andrea. But at the end of the night, she goes, I was a bit disappointed. I said, well, what for? She goes, well, you, you just weren't present. You weren't, you weren't with me. I'm like, what do you mean I was sitting on the couch? She said, yeah, yeah, but you're on your phone, right? And so... Because I had an ear, so she was on the left of me, mm -hmm. and I had the earbud on my right ear, <laughs> and I had it down by my leg, and it just meant that I could, because she was watching um, a show that I wasn't interested in, mm -hmm. right? which, which I get, right? I'm, I've, I've got a... Mm -hmm. and, um, We've all got different interests. But the important thing, the important thing was that, um, so I'm all about, when I'm watching something, I'm single yep. speed just drives me nuts, right? Yep. So I've got a, like on YouTube, you can speed the play yep. speed up. Yep. But when you're on your desktop, um, uh, quite often you just have to be at the mercy of the speed that's being played. Um, so there is a Google Chrome extension, Ben. Oh! I was, hey? Now, you're so wondering where I, I was going with that story, well, I was right? wondering about how you, you recovered. Well, um, well I, I actually, um, I apologised. I that's said, yep. I, I hear you. And so yep. now I've, uh, I've spoken to Andrea about, yep. that's important to me to learn all that sort of stuff. So yep. I've got to pick the times and good, so good. I spend more time well, on I just her. wanted to close that loop. Yep. yep. Where we go. But you can see how I, uh, I yeah, use that I as the reason. I knew your story into the life hack. So it's, it's a Chrome plugin. Yep. And it's called Video Speed Controller. All you need Ooh. to do, Ben, is Google v v Ivis, hey? Oh, Ivis. We've got a hashtag. Hashtag Game 
changer. Ooh, you don't often hear changer. from Ivers, but she, oh, my, my life hacks don't often impress her. <laughs> so what you do, Ben, is you, once you've got the Google Chrome extension, yeah. any time you're on a website that's got a video playing, all I have to do is push the D button and it goes 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1. 1.3, 1. Oh. I think I can go up to 3 speed, right? Wow. 3 speed's a bit fast for me, I've got yeah. to say. I usually yeah. tap out at 2 speed. <laughs> and then if it's too fast, I just push the S button, which um, yeah. is just next to it, so I can play with the speed. And I'm ripping through more all stuff. Of this, all of this learning which content. Which is good because if I can get through more stuff, that means I can invest more time with my beautiful wife on the couch. Oh, and I won't get in trouble. Right <laughs> Got back there. Very um, good. But I acknowledge that um, I'm hard to be around. I'm always on to the next thing. I know that you're a bit the similar, Ben. Yes. Next thing, next thing, next thing. And she's going, just, just a student of life, mate. Hang up. So that is my life hack today. Got a clap from Ivis, which is in, which is pretty rare. Ben, what's your did you know? Did you know, Bryce? So each year, well, no, I shouldn't say each year, but the Australian Bureau of Statistics does a household expenditure survey, okay? And they do it roughly every five or six years. Mm -hmm. uh, for those geeks out there who love this sort of stuff and you want to look at the data, it's category number 5630. Mate, okay. You can't even read the number. It's not five, so 6530. <laughs> There's my dyslexia coming out there. So 6530. Yeah, my bad. My bad, everyone. <laughs> um, and I'm just today I'm just going to focus on one minute, which is a bit of a segue about what we we're talking about bankruptcy and so forth, which is financial stress. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, put simply, it's households who are not coping financially. They measure this. And they've got a uh, criteria. Ooh. So I want to share with people yeah, that might be driving along this thing, oh, geez, right, am I in financial cross. stress? Because I think there's a few people that might be going, geez, I'm pretty close to that in some cases. A household can be said to be in financial stress if they are experiencing four or more indicators of financial stress within a 12 month period. Mm -hmm. There are two types of financial stress indicators financial stress experiences and missing out experiences. Ooh. So I'm going to go through the list. So let's go, how many or more? So two, two you're going to get four, four or more. Four in a 12 month period. Oh, this is exciting. And there's two different types. All right. All right. So financial stress experiences, here we go. Yep. Unable to raise $2,000 in a week for something important. So in other words, they don't have $2,000 in savings yep. that they could look at. Spend more money than received. Okay. And that's that solvency thing we were talking about before. Yep. Uh, could not pay gas, electricity, or telephone bills on time. Okay. Could not pay registration or insurances on time. Okay. Pawned or sold something because they didn't have cash. Okay. You might pawn or sell it because it's of no use. That wouldn't be classed as that, yep. but that's basically raising cash because you haven't got any. Went without meals. Ooh. Okay. So we're getting into the tough stuff now. Unable to heat their home. Okay. Okay. Sought assistance from welfare community organisations or sought financial help from friends or family. So it's four or five of a combined of these two. Four, not four of those category. over a 12 month period. Yep. Okay, um, and you can pick any one of these okay. lists. Right? Incl including the two categories, yep. Yep, yep. Okay. Any, so th that, that so would that's be financial two. financial stress, yep. So if you've got two of those, or three of those, or four of those in a 12 month period, you are, would you you'd be classified under the ABS as being in financial okay. stress. All right. Okay, the other one is missing out on experiences. Could not afford a holiday for at least one week a year. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay at the Sheraton or the W Hotel or whatever it might be that you're looking at. It just means you can take a break. Just take a break. Could not afford a night out uh, once a fortnight. Okay. So that's maybe a dinner out or something like that. Could not afford friends or family over for a meal once a month. Okay. Could not afford a special meal once a week. Mm -hmm. Could not afford secondhand clothes uh, most of the time. Could, sorry, could, could only, only afford secondhand clothes for most of the time. Yep and could not afford leisure or hobby activities. Ooh, that's really so practical. So if you think about it. Yeah, that's practical. There could be a lot of people like, oh, you know. So if they are in that sort of frame, money management for them is really important. Yeah. Right, so the segue back to what we've been talking about in trapping that surplus, but also making conscious decisions about your money and the opportunity cost of that. So how you would do that, prioritise what you said, Bryce, in, in point seven. Go back and listen to that goal that Bryce went through. Plan, basically, and also make sure that you allocate and prioritise. Once you set it all out, now in our book we talk about sort, gather and sorting and then calculating, then there's probably a step in there where you can prioritise that. What's the most important thing for me that's gonna make me happy? And it, it's not about the money, 
it's about the happiness piece. Now, Ben, if anyone uh, can relate to um, four or more of those that you just went out, yep. um, send us an email to info at the property couch. We will send you a book for free um, because we need you to get on top of your money management. Um, but so if, if, if you identify with that, yep. it, we, we, we yeah, want look, we're on a crusade, Bryce. I think it's a great initiative. So yes, absolutely. Anyone who feels like that. So if it, obviously let us know why you're under financial duress and we yep. will send you a book um, to make sure that we can uh, help you get out of that. So um, very good, Ben. I think that was really practical. Um, so well done. Yeah. And if you want to share a bit of your story, we want to talk to that people because we were talking before about the experiences of what successful investing looks like and people get confidence from that. But also people can understand other people's stories in terms of how they got to where they are mm. so you don't make those same mistakes again. Mm. Terrific. Well, very good. All right, well, uh, seven tips to trap surplus cash. Hopefully that helps you, obviously, with about 60, 70 days until Christmas, Ben. Um, and not far off from our 200th episode. Oh, oh 200th. What are okay. we going to do? You're going to get the streamers? Oh, yep, my streamers over there. I'll have to do something. We'll see. Well, who knows? We might have had yeah. a guest. You never know. Yeah. Just we'll wait and see. Well, we've got a few cool well, ideas. We'll make it a we? very special show. We will make Whatever. it. Well, very... I will make it a special show. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just rub it on. <laughs> <laughs> very good. All right, Ben. Uh, until next week. Knowledge is empowering, Bryce, but only if you act on it. All right, guys. See you later.